Have you ever wondered what your favorite comic book heroes would look like with a Japanese twist? Then you absolutely have to pick up the first issue of Marvel's new five-part series, Demon Days, which reimagines the X-Men as warriors, sorcerers, yokai, and kami in a mythical feudal Japan. In this video, we'll dive into artist and storyteller Peach Momoko's watercolor world of Kirisaki Mountain. Hey folks, I'm Kay, and if this is your first time clicking play, welcome to my channel, Eat, Pray, Anime, where I explore the religious history and culture behind your favorite Japanese media. When I was a kid, my week revolved around two key days. Saturday mornings were for cartoons, and Wednesday afternoons were for going to the comic book store with my dad. I am a huge comic book fan. I love all sorts of comic book companies, even defunct ones like CrossGen, but I will always be a Marvel girl at heart. At the time I'm filming this video, it's March 2021, and we're at the tail end of the COVID-19 pandemic. Honestly, I haven't left my house to go to the comic book store in ages. But when I heard about Marvel's new series, Demon Days, I knew I had to get my hands on an issue. I grabbed my mask, my car keys, and I basically yeeted myself out of my house. Shout out to my dealer, I mean local comic book store owner Jared at Heroes Your Mom Threw Out in Elmira, New York for hooking me up. Demon Days X-Men number one is the first issue in a limited series written and illustrated by Japanese tattoo and comic book artist Peach Momoko with lettering by Ariana Mar and English adaptation by award-winning translator, writer, and scholar of Japanese media and folklore extraordinaire Zach Davison. I've been obsessed with Peach and Davison for a long time. Peach is a member of Marvel's Stormbreakers program for elite up-and-coming comic book artists. In the past, her variant covers have always made a huge splash due to her use of watercolors, heavy inks, and Japanese aesthetics. Her stories and artwork often feature a mesmerizing mix of the gorgeous and the grotesque, and Demon Days is an exceptional example. I mean, look at this! Is this not the most beautiful thing you've ever seen in your life? Zach Davison is a super popular translator who has worked on a staggering amount of properties. He may be best known for his translations of Mizuke Shigeru's Gegege no Kitaro and his original books on Japanese folklore like Yurei, The Japanese Ghost, Yokai Stories, and Kaibyo, The Supernatural Cats of Japan. I'm also a big fan of the essays Davison wrote for Image Comics Wayward, which I will definitely cover in future videos. Highly recommend Davison's books. They are super fun and informative reads, and I'll include links to the books that I mentioned in the description for this video below if you're interested. Okay, I'm gonna start digging into the story, so if you would like to avoid spoilers, then just skip to the next chapter in the timeline below. I'll catch you later. Demon Days number one follows the story of Sai, aka Psylocke, a Ronin or sword for hire, and her wolf companion Logan, aka Wolverine. Sai is hired by a village nestled in the mists of Kirisaki Mountain to defend it from the pillaging ogres or Oni, not to mention the terrible serpent yokai Orochi, whom the villagers call Venom. The villagers, like the young huntress Tsuki, aka Danny Moonstar, see the Oni who ransack their fields as a threat. The only one they can turn to is the eccentric Shugendo exorcist Juju, aka Jubilee. But Sai, who has traveled extensively through the mountains, reveals that Oni are not innately aggressive or violent. Humans have expanded their territory into the mountains and forests that yokai like the Oni call home, and thus upset the balance between them. Sai promises the Red Oni, Hokmaru, that the villagers will respect the Oni's territory if they aid them in banishing Venom from the nearby temple for good. In the end, Harmony is restored to Kirisaki Mountain and Sai goes on her way. Finally, we realize that Sai's story was a folktale being read by a young girl, Mariko, who was being taken care of by the mysterious Miss Kuroki, aka Black Widow. In the last panels, we realize that Mariko lives on the modern-day Kirisaki Mountain, and the wolf Logan hides still in the forest, providing a mysterious link between past and present to be further explored in the next issue. As a story set in mythical Japan, Demon Days features several supernatural and religious touches that I really appreciated. 
For example, I noticed little details that made the world feel more real, like a statue of the Bodhisattva Jizo on the road, which you can see all over Japan today, and the statues of the elemental and protector kami Fujin and Raijin at the entrance of the temple. In the back of the comic, you'll find the yokai files, with illustrations and short explanations of some of the legendary characters in the story. Being a big fan of Zach Davison's essays in Wayward, I was really excited to see that he carried them over from Demon Days. Davison explains that Jushi are a class of magic users best understood as exorcists, who are part of the ritual system revolving around mountains known as Shugendo, which combines elements of kami worship and esoteric Buddhism. Jushi are a special class of Yamabushi, ascetic shamans who train their spiritual powers through rigorous ritual exercises in Japan's sacred mountains. As Davison notes, Jushi were unique in their performances of theater and dance, most notably the Jushi Hashiri, intended to entertain the kami and invite their protection. Today, Jushi Hashiri is preserved in no theater, particularly the opening ritual performance called Okina. Yamata no Orochi, translated as the great eight-headed snake, is fairly well known from the myth of the storm kami Susano's battle with him, recorded in the 8th century mytho-historical texts, the Kojiki and Nihon Shoki. If you'd like to hear more about that, check out the link above to see my video about Naruto and Susano. Finally, Davison introduces the Aka Oni, or Red Oni, Myths about Oni are some of the oldest in Japan, and they typically frame Oni as either malevolent spirits in opposition to Kami, or as Hindu and Buddhist demons called Rakshasas. Oni are traditionally depicted as being red, blue, and sometimes white. We see red Oni in Demon Days. Davison includes a popular modern children's story, Naitaka Oni, or the Red Oni Who Cried, that tells of a kind red Oni who only wanted to befriend humans. His friend, the blue Oni, assists him by scaring humans and allowing the red Oni to charge in and play the hero. But in the process, the red Oni loses his friend, the blue Oni, and he cries. I don't want to spoil the whole thing for you, so that wraps up my rundown of Marvel's Demon Days X-Men number one. Needless to say, there's so much good content and beautiful illustration in this issue. It is well worth the listed price of $5, and I cannot wait for the next issue in June. If I've convinced you to get your hands on your own copy of Demon Days number one, please remember to support your local comic book stores and maybe even pick up a variant cover or two. Honestly, I had such a hard time choosing between all of the variant covers, but I'm not made out of money. Just don't forget to wear a mask. Or two.